everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our 4 for 4 series, the Heritage Round. And so up for today we have layout number three and we are going to be playing with all four patterns. So let's talk about our uh, papers and then we'll get into playing with some designs and then what I'm going to get into because I have some more photos. I think there's three that I'm going to play with this time so that will be fun. Okay so the four pieces of paper we're going to be using is from um, our group number one. Paper number one is going to be this one half inch and it was that long notched piece. So one half inches and basically by 12 a little bit notched uh, taken off there and then our paper number two is a one by twelve and then our paper number three is a six by six and our paper number four is a six by six so just a few pieces of paper but there's a lot you can do with that of course I mean honestly you could do that right there if you wanted to isn't that fun oh man okay so let's get cracking here so the one thing you can do is that you can take these six by six papers and not only can you use them as this size but as we talked in our six by six series lots of things you can do with them so don't be uh, thinking that you have to leave them that way so you could just put a band of this paper in the middle of these six by six squares and I don't even think I'm in the middle and then what you can do then I'm looking at my notes is that you can take this one by 12 and it goes this way and you can just layer it right on top of that and then of course this half inch you can layer on top of that so basically you're just making a band in the middle with those four elements but the bonus with that is is that now you can start playing with those things we put in the kit and so we can start playing with washi and we can start playing with border stickers where are they at oh i got some right here we can play with border stickers oh look how pretty that is and then what you can do is also if you want to play with your ribbons and your trim and your lace man you can just keep on going or what you can do is what i'm showing you can do all three so if this middle band is not enough for you you can go up and go down using these elements we put in our kit whether it's border stickers or washi or uh, ribbons and twine and tw uh, trimmings and things like that so then the other thing that you can do with this of course is our fabulous little trick of this rotate <laughs> Yes, you could rotate. Now, you do want to pay attention to your designs on your paper. And so, of course, you know, you would want to make them right side up. But then you're going to do the same thing as now you're going to put the band in the middle. So you could take this one half by 12 and cut it in half. So you would have half a half inch over here and a half inch over there. So that would expand that. And then also get that same, uh, whatever your paper number two is, you would get that same color over there. And then with this, you could also just layer it over here as an extra little piece or over here you can do so much with this little piece of paper and I think I may use this little sliver as embellishments on my layout I'm thinking I haven't completely decided and so you could do that and then of course as we showed you can make it wider by using that washi and that border sticker and the, the ribbons and the lace and I do want to say that I got this question is what do I use for my uh, race lace and ribbon as I use score tape and I think it's the best thing so if I use this on my layout I will leave it here and I will definitely talk about that so then the other thing is that what we can do is we can take our six by six papers and we can flush them here to the left and it sounds like either someone's in my driveway or someone's I don't know I hear some noise and it's not very often I hear noise. I may hear a vehicle, but I don't really hear people. So if I hear people, something's not right. <laughs> no, okay. So then with, uh, we're gonna flush them to the left. We're gonna take this one uh, by 12 and then we could layer it. And then also with this, you layer it. So we're just taking this design, this band, and we're flushing it clear to the left. And then the bonus with this is, again, you can keep playing with this wonderful border stickers and just keep on going or what you can do well we'll talk about that in just a minute and then of course what can you do rotate it again so now that band is at completely at the bottom so many different <laughs> ways you can do this of course just add another border sticker here and now we have the half of a horror's happy horizontal but the top is empty so that is another design so then also let's play with uh I want to show you something here. I have a note here. So say if we wanted to do this in the middle. 
and of course we wanted to add some washi and all that we'll put a border sticker here and depending on how we do the photos and I'm going to show some photo mats here in a minute is that what you can do is don't forget you have doilies most of us probably put doilies in our heritage kit so if this looks a little sparse don't forget you can use your doilies up here and look at your doilies if you do them in a set of three if they're about four inches you can overlap them so these three sets of doilies can really act as a piece of pattern paper if you can visualize that of course i got things every <laughs> kitty wampus right now so you see what i'm saying those three doilies of course you'd probably tuck them a little bit better than what i have them oh goodness gravy is this upside down <laughs> so there you go you could use doilies in place of a piece of paper i wanted to show that i had a note there okay so then uh let's talk about how another thing you could do is that using these blocks is that what you would simply do is you could layer and you just play with these blocks just like that and then of course this one by 12 you can just layer and layer and that is a very minimalist type of design and this works good if you basically only have one photo or you have a big photo and then you just use that uh, as your one photo this is basically a mat for that one photo this is a very minimalist type of page but you could get in a big title and a lot of journaling depending on how many photos you have and then with this if this looks a little plain I want to show you something is that you could take some paper especially if you have plain cardstock and you could mat this so this is a wood grain so you could mat this in a solid or a wood grain or what you could do is mat this in a pattern oh, I have washi running you could mat this in a pattern like that vintage collage and then you could do that as well so when it comes to how do I want to say this if you feel like you don't have enough look at your washi look at your ribbon look at your border stickers and then if something doesn't seem like it's meaty enough start looking at matting even when it comes to your photos my photos this time are kind of small so I definitely can consider matting my photos and here's something when's the last time you took two photos and put them all on the same mat that is definitely an option say if these were a little bit bigger and then oh that just works really well right there look at that size right there <laughs> so again you could use your paper that you reserved for matting and you could add another piece of paper for that okay so now let's talk about some photos how could we get some different photos in with those designs we just talked about okay and so I will uh, do that. I know not everybody wants to see that, so I just wanted to show the designs. So basically, it's just taking these four pieces of paper, these four different pieces of patterns, and you're shifting them around. And then I would say get your photos out and then let that dictate as to where you want that. Oh, here's this other piece. Look at this vintage collage. This is perfect. Some people say this is very busy, so use it in smaller pieces or use it as a background mat. Of course, Depending on how heavy your cardstock is, you could gut some of this so you could use it on another page. That is fun. Hmm, I may use that myself. Okay, so let's go back to that first one where we put these 6x6 six six papers in the middle, basically as a band. So it's basically a 6x12. We just have two pieces of paper. And we put this here and put that there. Okay, now let's talk about photos. So if you have 4x6 photos, and again, you could dress this up with all those elements we talked about is that you could do three four by six photos easily and i will tell you this is an easy two page and then the middle photo i always kind of like laying on top so the photo that you put in the middle here your number two photo let it be a photo that you don't want to cover up basically any of it and then this one you can cover up a little bit of the left and this one you could cover up a little bit of the right even if you want to put that middle photo on foam tape that really stands out and so then let's talk about if we did it this way how about if we get some four by fours how many could we get on there now of course that's what that band in the middle just want to give you a visual of what that would look like so you could definitely you could butt all those butt those all up together if you wanted Oh, that would be pretty. Take all those four photos and butt them up together. And then you, if you had your bonus sheet, you could take four photos and then mat them and put the four photos on the mat, put the mat on top of all that. That is pretty. And then let's see with three by threes. You know, the smaller the photo, the more you can get. But, oh, let's try six on here. I will tell you, I don't know what it is with this black paper. 
even with a brand new blade, it seems to just feather out and fizzle out. I don't know what's going up with, on with it. It's a brand new blade, but it seems like I have these little black pieces everywhere. That's always an indicator right there. If you see that, that's always an indicator that your blade needs trim or your blade needs changed. But for whatever reason, this cardstock, which came from Michaels, by the way, I don't know what it is. It just seems like it gets eat up in my trimmer, and that's even with a new blade. Okay, there's six. So if this was a double page, you could get 12 photos on there. That is really, really nice. Okay, so then of course with this, you could use one of these blocks as a title, one as the journaling, and still get four photos. That's always a fun option. Okay, now let's play with these six by six here to the left. We're basically just gonna shift everything. So when you're playing with your papers, don't forget to rotate. But uh, before you started hearing, pay attention to what uh, designs you know, what for direction your text is in, I should say. So now with this one, of course, you know you could get in. Let's see, could we get four, four by six? I think we could. You maybe want to trim one of these. And this is how I like to do. If I have four, four by six and one sheet like this, is that I would uh, keep one of four by six and then I would trim a little bit off. I would trim a little bit off of this bottom one. And then keep this one... Uh, a four by six and then trim a little bit off of this one so basically you're going to trim a little bit off the bottom one or you can alternate trim a little bit off of this one have this one be four by six you get the idea so there's four and then of course with the four by four let's see how many we get on there i think we could get 12 i think we could easily get 12 photos on one page or no that would be nine <laughs> I got too I got too rambunctious there. Yeah, nine. But oh my goodness, nine photos. Of course, Janet, if you used <laughs> that wasn't four by fours. Sorry. Yeah. I mean I was getting too excited. I thought twelve photos on one layout. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a pipe dream. Okay, so there's four. Let's see if we could get six. Well, you know what we could do. You could, but you'd have to overlap. Sometimes with heritage photos, you don't want to overlap because you want to see what's in the background. So let's do it this way. Let's do two four by fours, three four by fours, and then we could get a couple three by threes in there. So that would be five photos. That's always a good option. And again, you could use one of these for your title and then come down here with your journaling. That's a very pretty page. Okay, so now let's go back to that three by three because I got too excited. <laughs> yeah, I think we could get nine on there easily. And your your layout would still have room to breathe. Yes, nine, easy. And again, use one of these blocks for the title, one for the journaling. So basically you're taking a grid of photos and putting them on a band of paper. Love that, love that. Okay, so now what will I be doing? Oh, well, let me show you one more thing. Why not? <laughs> we have time. I want to show you one more thing. Because we talked about the washi and the border stickers and also to the trim. But if you had cut apart, a lot of us are trying to use them this year. Uh, what you can do is, let's go back to this design here. And I think this is, I don't know what I have, I haven't decided on what I'm doing. But I do think I'm going to use this cut apart. Because it says we are who we are because they were who they were. And I really like this. Because you know... The way our grandparents are and were, some of that is reflected in our own lives. So I like that. I really did. So for the cut aparts, here's here's my one by twelve, and here's that one half by twelve. And then if this is too long, don't be afraid. You can make this shorter. And this has a notch, so you could put a notch on that a number two paper. Is that you could take these cut aparts and you could also use those as embellishments and also to. Uh, journaling spots, title spots, so you could trim some of those down. So don't forget to use your cut aparts if you put them in your kit or just extra pieces of paper. You can take your bonus paper and cut them into three by four or even a little less. I would cut one of these off and so you could run a band, you could run a band of three by fours in a vertical fashion too. Oh, that would be fun. Let me flip this around. <laughs> oh, see now here's another design. Oh, I like this too. Oh, of course, my paper is going upside down. Let me do this and this. 
and this. So there's my two six by six, my one half by 12. And of course I would layer this little wimpy piece on top of that. And then I could take my three by four cards and I, of course I would trim them down or you could simply butt them up and then you could run a row like that. Oh, isn't that fun? And then, oh, where's that wood grain? <laughs> Oh, now we're cooking with peanut oil. And then you can mat that. Oh, very, very pretty. So what will I be playing with? I think I will, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but I do have one more note here. Is that one thing I do know I'm going to use is I'm going to use this Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. And why? I say this in a lot of my videos is that if you don't know what to do, do what you've already done or look what's in your photos because your photos is the story. So these are a chauffeur license of my grandfather. And so they actually have staples that is still in there. So we worry about things that we use today rusted, rusting. Well, these were back from 1944, 1945, and they haven't rusted one bit. So, again, I don't worry. So, these were his chauffeur license, and then also to his uh, motorcycle. So, since this already has staples, I made sure that I put this close to, closer to my space so I could use some more staples on the page. So, you could look at what's in your photos. So, anything with metallic, anything with wheels, anything with this round shape, and then we're also outside. You could definitely include that. So I really like, I'm definitely going to get that cut apart. I'm definitely going to use the Tim Holtz um, mini stapler because of the staples that's already in that. And I think if I flip this one over, it actually had said photograph of license to be pasted or stapled here. Isn't that interesting? That's the original paper from his chauffeur license. Love that. And I'm not going to be playing with doilies because I'm doing a man page. I'm going to uh, stay away from that. But I am going to use this ribbon. Now, you would say, okay, you decided against doilies, so why are you going to use ribbon? I just like it because it's the black. I, I don't know why. I, I just like this. I really do. Or I could use this burgundy. I could do that. Or maybe I would do both. And I have this black and white. Oh, well, that would be fun, too. Mm, what else do I got? I'm just looking here. Oh, and these border stickers. I am definitely going to be playing with border stickers. I have some here. Now, what I would do, since this is chauffeur license, so I could definitely use the cameras. Wood grain goes with anything. Uh, numbers. Uh, there are calendar months. That goes with anything. Numbers. So I may just play with that. Maybe what I could do is I could make a band of paper uh, and I would use my border stickers. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so hold on. I will get busy playing. And uh, I'm just, that's all I'm going to do is play because that's what this whole series is for me is simply playing. I'm really enjoying this. So I definitely want to thank my subscribers for the encouragement for us to do a, a heritage rind. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so we're going to come back. Oh, wait, what do I see? I see inking. I see. I could do some stamp. Not going to do the sequins, but I do have some paint. Mm, okay, I got paint. We have ground espresso, black tie, and glacier white. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can get some paint on here. You never know what we're going to come up with. Okay, so hold on. All right, I am back with my finished layout, and of course, you know what I'm going to say. I love it. But when it comes to actually scrapbooking vintage and heirloom and heritage legacy type of photos, we're just excited that they're on a layout rather than being in a box which is the case for many years. So I'm, I'm really tickled with that. So let's talk about the four pieces of paper that we had reserved for layout number three. Where did they land? What did I do with them? And all this embellishments and some tips and tricks and hacks. Yeah, we got a little bit of everything going on. Yes, because I got some inking on there, some stamping, and just a whole heap of fun. So our four pieces of paper, you can see that my six by six squares I left as is. So right there is my number three, six by six. And right here is my wood grain, six by six. And then that one inch by 12, landed right there, right underneath them. And then my one half by 12, where is it? It is right here in these tabs. So what I did was I took this half inch. This was my one half by 12, this little skimpy, skimpy little piece. And I used my Martha Stewart bracket and I used the very tip of it and I used it to make tabs. And this is basically what it looks like. 
just little tabs. But then what I decided to do, because I did have this turquoise down here, I didn't have that color anyplace else, I flipped them. That's the bonus of having double-sided paper. So I flipped that, and so then I used three of those up there just as some embellishments, purely to add some dimension, of course, and then that turquoise. So that is what I did with my one half by 12. <laughs> I made embellishments out of it. And that is true with this 4 for 4 series. When you have those papers, you can do anything with them. You can use them, not use them, cut them in half, rip them, tear them, sand them, stitch them, and use them for embellishments. And the list goes on and on. And so, of course, my title is absolutely Clarence. That is my grandfather's first name. And I wanted to say something that I, I don't want to forget. Because my photos are just these three photos basically in a grid form is that underneath this because these were his two chauffeur license and that was my whole mood and feel for this whole page you'll see that is that I have underneath this I have a covered but it's actually his handwriting and so he has his full name in cursive font his own handwriting in this license I love that love it love it and so what else did I do I used a couple border stickers down here you can see they don't all meet up to 12 inches and so no worries I just used the smaller one at the bottom and you will notice that I mixed ivory and white I don't worry about that and I used a cut apart very happy with that and so on that cut apart because it says we are who we are because they were who they were. Love that. So I broke out some Technique Tuesday stamps, which are floating here. And I did something on this page that we did back in shop class in seventh grade. So I'm excited to show that. So what I decided to do was I added some stamping. And so I used this one. It says, These Photos Tell. And that's basically a lead-in to this quote. And then, of course, I did this Allie Edwards uh, set again. And it says, remember, beautiful handwriting. And then, of course, you can see I inked a lot of things. And we're going to talk about inking in just a minute. And so, of course, I got on some bread, some wood veneer, enamel dots, and some ephemera and paper clips. And, of course, I love this sticker that says, ancestors are my entourage. And there's my grandpa on top of a motorcycle and one of his friends. And isn't that a perfect sticker? And so I definitely want to talk about that right now. And I have a whole page of notes, so if you don't want to see anything else, there's the finished layout. Come back in a few days, we'll have layout number four. Is that this uh, set is by My Mind's Eye, My Heritage. I only could get a little sampling of this. We talked about that in the SOS series. Is that I decided the papers did not really appeal to me, but I really liked the sticker sheet. I was not impressed with the weight of these stickers, but I will tell you I am impressed with the versatility of these sets. And that is where that st sticker, Ancestors Are My Entourage, is that not perfect for this? <laughs> Just this photo alone is perfect. And then also, too, because my grandfather, uh, those are his chauffeur license. So I just really... <laughs> like that and of course this word heritage that came from here as well so I'm really enjoying the stamp set and of course this black uh, ampersand that came from there and you'll see that I have holes up here because what I did was I took my Martha Stewart birch leaf and let me see if I can put something behind this you see that right there? I took my Martha Stewart punch and this is gray cardstock and I wanted something gray and I used the heading <laughs> of the branding strip of this sticker sheet and I got five leaves out of there and right here is where the five leaves landed. So I really am just playing with that sticker sheet. So totally, totally worth the $1.99. And so let's talk about um, the very background and I have a piece of acetate. Now of course you know the scrapbooker hack is that that looks like a 5 by 11 band but really it is just a square cut in half of this acetate and half over here is a small piece and over here is a small piece so just a small piece so basically a one by five and so you get the illusion that it runs the whole way across but it doesn't so again that's another option of using acetate is using it as a band just pretend that that would be a band of paper but it's a band of that acetate transparency and so you may see in the close-ups is that these transparencies, I did a treatment to them, and you're like, well, I don't see anything. What's the treatment? The treatment is, is that I staple them, and then I remove the staples. And you're like, well, no, why would you do that? Because in the chauffeur license, uh, they actually still had some staples in it. 
and I added, I added a couple Tim Holtz staples, just you know, staples, just to make it look fun. And of course, to go along with the hardware of the paper clips is that I wanted the, you can still see some of the holes where the staples came out. And so that's exactly what I decided to do. And so, and this is a good hack. If you put, if you, if you put a staple in something and you don't like the way it looks, take it out easily and then just use the holes. Uh, to make it look like it was intentional. So basically I distressed this transparency. So I just ran some staples through that and then I carefully removed them so I didn't rip it. And so we have uh, staple holes here and here and here and here. So that is another way to distress. Use your stapler and then remove the staples and so you put those holes in it. So I really liked that. It was just a, a, a fun little thing that happened. And how that reminded me, of course the representation was the staples up here, was we did that in shop class. We used to make um, pieces with wood and then we would be taught how to distress them using nails and screws and any type of metal. And then you would put those impressions in the wood. And so that is what we did. Uh, I used a Tim Holtz stapler to put impressions inside that acetate. So. There are two more ways to use that acetate. Use it as a band and then use it as an embellishment and even distress it if you wish to. So now let's talk about the wood veneer because this is the mood and feel of a chauffeur and the entourage and all of that is that I took a wood veneer and this is a Jen Hatfield wood veneer. You would not think that's Jen Hatfield, but it is. And then these are two gears type wheels. That's the closest thing I had. And those came from Hobby Lobby. So we're gonna talk about wood veneer for a minute. And so what did I do? I inked them. And so the ink I used was called Prima Old Road. Again, mood and feel, <laughs> so I used that gray. And so that's why I ended up using this gray from this branding strip as an embellishment because I wanted to bring in more gray. And so when you are inking wood veneer, one way to do it is that you would use the reverse or the back of a post-it note and you would use the sticky part and that will keep your wood veneer stationary. And then of course you would want to use a piece of scrap, of course. Let me find something. Or I like sometimes paper plates. And then you, I just applied my ink right to, I'll just show you. I just applied my ink right to my wood veneer. Now, the thing is, if you put it on this post-it note, your hands are not going to get inky. Your surface isn't going to get inky. And then let it dry. Let it dry. Let it dry. Oh, by Lord, let it dry. <laughs> yes, because it is wet. You do need to let it dry. And then what I did was I gave mine a couple, uh, couple treatments of that ink. And so, love that. How easy is that? And I didn't even have to get my uh, fingers inky at all. So let that dry. What I did was I left mine dry overnight because I had the time and I did. And so that is how I inked the wood veneer. And I adhered them with my tacky glue. Easy peasy. Okay, so then of course, let's talk about some more inking. Um, I inked uh, the papers, a couple of the papers, not all of them. I inked this ivory cardstock and I inked my background background. And I think that was about it. But I wanted to show you a little another hack when it comes to inking because this is absolutely <laughs> something you can do. Now, of course, with inking, I don't do a lot of it, not an expert at it, but every once in a while, I like it. And that, of course, with these little chalk inks, this is what I like because they're so easy to maneuver. And that might not show up. Let me see if I can find something that would show up. Let's try this piece of paper here. Okay? So, easy. I mean, it's just easy. But if you want to give yourself instant photo corners with inking, what do you do? You simply mark your ink in such a way and you give yourself an instant photo corner. And you can make it as small or as big as you want. So there is some photo corners using inking. That's always an option, so don't forget that. Okay, now let's talk about one other thing, or maybe two other things. I will tell you this black paper that I got from Michaels, eight and a half by 11 cardstock, really is feathering out on me. So I wanted to show you what I had to do to get, this looks like it's mangled and eat up and chopped up and yeah, it didn't look good, but the, my finished result looks good. So what I had to do was, this is the black cardstock I'm talking about. It's just eight and a half by 11. And 
it see how it feathers it just is absolutely is terrible and it has nothing to do with my trimmer or my punches it's just the texture or the fibers you just don't get a clean cut so what i had to do was i had to back it with a piece of copy paper not cardstock copy paper though from your printer and then i would put these two together and then i would punch and of course my punch yeah well, my punch is right here and then i would punch them together and then that is how you get if you have some paper that's thinner or for whatever this doesn't isn't thin it's medium i don't know why it's all choppy like that but that is the hack put a piece of copy paper behind that that will give you some stability when you run it through your punch now you'll see that i have a bunch of other things over here and what were they my intention was that i stamped on some craft card stock and uh, you can see the stamp here is one of the Allie Edwards, and I was going to stamp on the leaves, and then um, well, I stamped on craft cardstock, and then I punched them, and I was going to use them, but I did not like the way the stamping showed up on those. So, will I get rid of them? No, I will keep them, but you know, sometimes you have best intentions, and of course, this is what it would look like. I just didn't like the way they looked. Eh, I don't know. They just didn't turn out what I pictured they would turn out. Okay, so now let me look at my notes. Okay. Photo corners. Okay, I think I covered everything other than two more things. When you have a set of alphas, and this K and Company set from way back in the day, you don't get very many. So, you know, you can't really spell out the name Clarence because you're going to run out of E's or A's or something. So, one thing I decided to do was to keep this laying out and use it for an initial, whether it's the last name or the first name. And so, I absolutely did use an H and I just put it down here in this cluster. And you'll see some close-ups at the end. And of course, with my brads, I did cover with washi. So, when you have those little stragglers of those alphas, use one and just use it as the initial. First name, last name, or if there's a certain letter in that means something, stick it on there. Now the other thing is too, I do have enamel dots and I do basically have three clusters. My journaling is going to go here and I am probably going to take up the majority of this block. And so my mom will be assisting me with that. So I'm excited about that. But when you are playing with enamel dots, there are some that when you put on a page, they just look honking, you know, and uh, Bella Boulevard has some really big ones and we are memory keepers has some really great big ones. These are not so bad, but even on a page when I'm doing a cluster, I might not want this whole look of this enamel dot so one good thing about these enamel dots is that they're flat enough and low profile enough that you can tuck them so just because it's an enamel dot doesn't mean it has to look like that you can absolutely tuck them uh where can i find something to tuck uh we're, okay, well, I'll try back. So what I'm saying is you can tuck some underneath paper. And here and right there by the automobile, you can see that I tuck them. So I get that representation of the enamel dot, but it's not so honking. And I think for me here, I can show. So let me just pull this out. And this is just one single enamel dot. And if I was, if I can get a hold of it, maybe not. Let me see if I can get a hold of it. I don't want to rip my wood veneer back up. Okay, so say there is my enamel dot. I don't like that. It looks too honking in comparison to this automobile. So the quick tip I did and the hack is just to tuck it. So there I just see it peeking through from behind the paper and the wood veneer. So when those enamel dots look a little big, tuck them, they'll look a little smaller. And I think that is all my page other than one more thing. I used more ephemera. So in that... Uh, link below the old design shop. Remember, I have been showing all this ephemera and ephemera and ephemera and ephemera. I had some that absolutely had, they were small and they had addresses on them. They just looked like a library card with an address. I cut them down and I inked them and I put them right here. And doesn't that go again with my mood and feel of being a chauffeur, chauffeur and driving and addresses just adds to my story love this absolutely love it so i hope you got some ideas as far as the inking some instant photo corners and then a mood and feel and let me talk about the brads for a minute because even within the brads i used intentional brads i used brads that have to do with navigation and maps 
and then of course this spread down here says me because this is about my grandpa and then up here I use stickers that says directions and directions <laughs> so all of that was used on purpose I really pay attention to what I'm using because every one of these elements this element and this element and this element and this element everything helps me record this story and so it just adds to the whole mood and feel so i hope you got some ideas from distressing some acetate using acetate using paper clips looking at a nice set of stickers and then punching some things even using the branding strip of some manufacturer stickers for some embellishments you can do a lot with a little so that's all i have for today come back in a day or two we will have layout number four i'm not sure how things are going to be going with the holiday but layout four will be coming next in the four for four series so you know what i'm always going to say come back happy thanksgiving if i don't get to talk to you and uh, come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna do 